Hello, welcome to Precon Decon, where we take a look at old pre-constructed decks from the history of Magic the Gathering. In this one, I'm going to be looking at a Tempest pre-constructed deck, which is the Flames of Wrath, which is a red-white deck. So this is the deck list for it. Uh, we have 18 creatures, 11 instants, 2 sorceries, an artifact, uh, 3 enchantments, and 25 land. Uh, obviously we've got the mana curve off to the side here. Uh, you can see it really spikes at 2 and 4. Um, yeah, so you can probably guess what the theme is here. Probably lots of little weenie creatures, lots of burn. Pretty straightforward red deck. Um, and white, apparently, but we'll we'll get to that. So let's uh let's look at some of these these creatures. So we have some creatures here which are just for kind of doing quick damage. So we have uh, a full place at a Mog Fanatic. Uh this used to be like a really good card back in the day, um, because um combat damage used to use the stack. So what you could do with Mog Fanatic is you could um either you know attack or block with it. Um, put its combat damage on the stack, so you could do one combat damage to whatever it was blocking or blocked by. And then you could sacrifice to do one damage to something else. So that meant it could take down uh, X2s, it could take down two X1s, um, it could take down an X1 and do one damage to an opponent. Um, really, really like nice, flexible card back in the day. Like It's only good because of like the rules back in the day. Um, but yeah, really, actually really nice to see like a full play set of something in one of these pre-constructed decks. Uh, Fire Slinger, um, so <laughs> this is, this is weird. So, uh, so back in the day, um, Blue used to have the, um, like the tap to do one, one damage to a target. Um, with no drawback whereas red you know the the color of direct damage had to make do with this guy who does one damage to a creature or player and one damage to you uh so they had to like have the the flawed the flawed tim uh so i mean like it's weird i actually i don't i'm not even sure if really if we really do tims anymore i can't remember the last time i saw a red creature that was generally like tap to do one damage to something thinking about it most of these days it's usually like a triggered ability like if you um for some reason the only one i can think of is the one from icoria which was like it dealt damage if you cycled a card there has to be another i'm gonna have to look at that later because that's gonna bother me um but yeah anyway uh lightning elemental for one haste uh it's fine um we, I'm gonna go a little tangent here with the art. I always thought the Kev Walker art, like where it's the, the like the big like creature made out of lightning coming across a volcano or something. I thought that was always the art, uh, but it's not. Apparently, this was the original art, um, and it doesn't really look like a creature. But it's fine, I guess. Small tangent there, but I just really want to talk about the art. And then Coil Tim Viper, three mana for a two one first strike. Like obviously, not super great, but. I'm going to say back in the day a lot, I realise, but back in the day, artefacts were usually kind of overcosted and or weak because I guess the thinking was, oh, well, they can go in any deck, so they should be kind of bad. Um, I mean, this is OK, like a 2-1 first strike. Actually, thinking about it, for the time, three mana for a 2-1 first strike would have been an all right rate. Um, and then we have like a few other uh, creatures, here, which I guess um, will make use of red mana in some way to do... Uh, something interesting. So Flowstone Giant um, had this kind of, um, I guess, the Flowstone mechanic, which was um, basically it was like kind of uh, fire breathing with risks in that you would usually pay um, a, you know, a small amount of red mana. And you did quite a big power boost, but then an equally big toughness decrease. So I guess you'd swing this guy and if he wasn't wasn't blocked, then you'd go, ha ha, now he's a 5-1. It's fine. <laughs> Um, Flowstone Salamander, um, does one damage to target creature blocking it. Um, I, I think this is, this would have been sort of a pretty good actually for back in the day, like to have an ability like that. Like he has no drawback. Um, you know, <laughs> you don't have to like discard cards randomly or pay life or anything. There's, you see a lot on kind of a lot of red cards of this time. Um, I, Flowstone Salamander is kind of okay. It does annoy me that it's a Flowstone, it's, you know, it says a Flowstone creature. And it doesn't have the flowstone mechanic, but that's fine. Sandstone Warrior, um, 
the, like the good it's his it, the oracle text for this card is so weird because like he was in a um uh he was in a corset where like the art was he was just like a regular like human um so like his oracle text now is a human soldier warrior um whereas yeah the art here like he's clearly not a human he's a guy made out of rock but it's fine um you know first strike with fire breathing is a pretty good combination I you know much not much else to say. Uh Firefly um is just bad. <laughs> it's a it's a one one flyer for four. Um but it has fire breathing. Um I'm gonna go off a little tangent about fire breathing. So I never understand the design decision to Okay, so like if you want to give a creature flying or first strike or trample or like an ability that's like always on, that's fine. You bake it into the cost of the card. Like, it makes sense that, like, a 3-3 three, three with Trample would cost more mana than a 3-3 three, three that doesn't have Trample. Um, but, like, with Fire Breathing, because it all... It requires a mana investment to use. Like, like Firefly would be fine if it was, like, I don't know, say, one colour and one red for a 1-1 one, one Flyer. That would be okay. Because, like, to make it good, you have to spend mana on it. Like, essentially, like, if you pay four mana for it and you never and you never spend the mana on its fire breathing ability then you've just massively overpaid for it for an ability you've never gotten to use i hope you understand where i'm coming from that but like it never made sense to me that fire breathing should like is is a as an ability is baked into a creature's cost when it's an ability you already have to pay man i'm i'm going in a, on a ramble there but like, i hope i get what you mean but yeah firefly is just bad uh and then, uh, speaking of bad uh wild worm this is this is great uh it's four mana for a five four and has a 50 50 percent chance of doing nothing uh comes to play flip a coin if you lose a flip it goes back to your hand brilliant um i don't know why they like you you see this a lot in the earlier sets where like basically any time a creature has a power over four that it's like the design's got really scared like oh god we have to give it like a crippling drawback because, like, oh, you can't have a creature with more than, like, four power. It's too good. So you have things like this where you have, like, oh, 50% chance of, like, just spending four mana to do nothing. Like, really terrible. You, know, you could argue that, like, because Pandemonium was in this um, was in this uh, block, that, you know, there's a potential of, like, oh, okay, you play Wild Worm, and if it re Pandemonium comes in, he does five damage, and then there's a chance he goes back to your hand, you do it again. But, like, that's not reliable or, or good. <laughs> Um, yeah, Wild Worm is just bad. Um, and I just I just don't understand like the need for all these drawbacks. Um, on the subject of drawbacks, uh, Magmasaur. Uh, I mean, he's a great, he's a giant dinosaur made out of lava. We can all get on board with that. So he comes in with five plus one plus one counters. I mean, firstly, like five mana for a five five. You know, the, this time in Magic history is, I mean, that's already big news. But of course, we need to have a drawback. So during your upkeep, you have to remove a counter from him. Or you sacrifice him, and he does damage equal to the number of counters on him to to each creature without flying in each player. So, like, this is a deck where, like, a lot of the creatures are quite small. So this guy has, like, almost, like, complete anti-synergy with the deck. Because, like, if you blow him up too early, he just, he obviously wipes the board, which is all your stuff as well. Because this was the time magic history where apparently all effects had to be symmetrical for some reason. Um... Or if you want to use him to, you know, attack and block with, he gets progressively weaker anyway. Um, I don't know. Just, they didn't do it. He's a giant dinosaur made out of lava. Let him be, you know, let him be good. <laughs> um, like, he's not dreadful. There are definitely worse cards. There's Wild Worm. Uh, but, I don't know. We're going to see this a lot in, in these early sets of, like, just big creatures having, like, these kind of drawbacks. Uh... And then interestingly, oh, we have a red-white card. We have a multicolored card, which was big news back then. Uh, so Tari Gorilla, so they're a creature with shadow. I've talked about shadow in the last uh, in the last video, which was Deep Freeze, uh, which had a creature with shadow in it. Shadow is basically it can only block or be blocked by a creature with shadow, which normally just means it's unblockable and can't block. Um, but this guy, you know, 3-2, 
three two one blockable for four is is okay. And when he does damage to an opponent, you can instead redirect that damage to a creature, which is actually pretty good. Uh, I think that you know he sneaks through obviously because he's like shadowy, hits an opponent, but if they've got like utility creature you want gone, that's fine. You can bolt them. I think that's pretty good. Also, have you noticed that this is like one of the only white cards so far? Also, I mean, it's not even really a fully white card because it's red white. But yeah, notice that we've you know this is this is meant to be a red white deck, and this is the first white card we've seen. Uh, so we have a bunch of burn. Uh, so Kindle is this really fun uh card where like it starts off kind of like as a bad shock, and then it uh, and then it gets progressively stronger. Um, it counts the number of Kindles in all graveyard. Uh, even the opponents, which again is like weird, uh, like for in terms of design these days. But uh, yeah, it's it's kind of fun. It's kind of a cute little card. Uh, lightning blast. Um, you know, this is when <laughs> light lightning bolts reign of terror was over, and they're like, okay, well we need lightning blast now, which is the jump from three damage to four damage is apparently three mana. Uh, searing touch, which does one damage to a creature player. This is one of the cards with buyback. Uh, buyback was a mechanic of the block where you pay an extra cost as you pay a spell, and if you do, it goes back in your hand. Like you don't just you don't put it into your graveyard. Um, I've talked about it a little bit in uh, the previous episode in Deep Freeze, but it basically means that like with buyback, you can't put it on a card that's like too good because uh, otherwise you just repeat a really good effect over and over again. And also, it's kind of boring because it means like you're spending all your mana doing that. You're not like playing your other cards. Uh, Rolling Thunder. This is one of my favourite X spells. Um, I always preferred this to Fireball. Um, just X damage divided how you choose amongst any number of targets. Really good. Really like it. Um, I think that was a common as well, which like seems insane to me. But anyway. Uh, Blood Frenzy, which is kind of like... Mm, well, I was going to say it's a bad combat trick. It's okay. So target attacking your block, which gets plus four, plus not turn to turn, end to turn, destroy it. Um... So, as I said, it was, I was going to say it was a bad combat trick, but there is actually like a, a secret tech with this card. If, uh, if an enemy's creature attacks you and you don't block it and you take the damage or whatever, during the um, like end of combat step, you can play this on it because that creature still counts as attacking, but it's done its damage. Um, and then at end of turn, it's destroyed. So it's like a red doom blade. It's a really janky way of doing like just a straight up red removal. Uh, two disenchants. Um, have you noticed the other? This is the only other white card in the deck. It's meant to be a red white deck, and this is it. It's just the two disenchants and the Satari gorillas, um, and then maze of shadows. Um, so in this um, in this block, um, red didn't really have a lot of ways of interacting with shadow. Um, so I guess this they put this in as a way of kind of like stopping enemy creatures with shadow, even though you have like all this burn that you could use on them anyway. But this is okay, I guess. I mean, at least it like comes in untapped and it produces mana, I guess. Bunch more red spells. So we have Goblin Bombardment to sacrifice creature, do one damage to any target. Really good card. Goblin Bombardment is great. Furnace of Wrath, double all damage. Um, it does double your opponent's damage as well. So it is like a weird symmetrical effect. Um, but obviously you'd play this in a turn where like you can benefit from the most. Like you'd play this like in the turn that you hope to win. Uh, Tangarth's Rage is another kind of like, I suppose it could be used as really wonky removal. Um, if Tangarth's Rage is attacking, it's plus three, plus naught, which is fine. Otherwise, you get minus two, minus one. Um, again, you you could stick that like on an opponent's like small creature, um, like, you know, an X1 and just kill them. Um, it's okay. Uh, it's, I mean, it's not great, but it's just, it's very weird. And then Squeeze Toy, one, prevent one damage to your creature, whatever. <laughs> okay, it's fine, I guess. So what could have been? Um, so I think the main thing is this deck should have just been like uh, mono red, like forget the white element of it completely, just make it pure red, because um, there were so many good like re decent red cards in in block that could have been used. So aftershock is uh, destroys artifacts, lands, or creatures, and does damage to you, but like it has utility. Canyon Wildcat is a two-one mountain walker with like no downside, which is actually pretty good for the time. Giant Strength is just an aura that gives plus two, plus two, but like fine. Stun stops something blocking for a turn. You draw a card, which is okay. Uh, Renegade Warlord three through first strike when he attacks all your other. He's basically battle cry. Um, 
gives all your creatures plus one and plus naught. Stalking Stones just becomes a 3-3 artifact creature if you sink all your mana to it. And Wrathy Dragon should, I feel like, should have definitely won the res. Because um, this used to be on like um, some of the booster packs, I think, because it's like a big cool dragon. Um, but yeah, 5-5 five, five with flying, when it comes into play, you sacrifice two mountains. So, well, you know, hope it doesn't get bounced. But again, then there was like so little bounce in this set. Um, there's like there was like time ebb and capsize, and that was kind of it. Um, so actually not as risky as it could have been, but uh, yeah, that was that's I I basically I think it's the white white elements should be taken out of it should have been just pure red, a lot of creatures so just go wide aggro red, you know really straightforward. So in summary, I think it's you know it's 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 okay. I think you know trying to include the white cards makes it like you know a little little weak there's some weird choices for like some of the cards included um but again as we said before like the thing with pre-constructed decks is like they get played a few times and then you know you you would adjust them to how you want but overall i think this is this is okay it's got a few rough edges but it would have been a lot easier to pick up and play and i think deep freeze this would have i think been more appealing to like maybe a new player because you know you see like oh creatures are attacked with creatures and spells that do damage great i understand that um it's a little easier to um get your head around than like a load of counter magic but what do you think uh did you have this deck did you ever play with it you know do you like how it looks you know um stick a comment below let's start a conversation about the flames of wrath um and i'll be back next time with another tempest block pre-con <laughs>